Good morning. morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, as we've gathered on this Sunday before Thanksgiving to celebrate and to give our thanks and praise. Um, It's a special Sunday in the life of our church, not just uh, with Thanksgiving around the corner, but also on the day that we consecrate our pledges and estimates of giving for the new year ahead. We reflect on the many blessings that the Lord has given us, and with joy we pledge to give back a portion of those many blessings for our church and the ministries that we're part of together. Later in the service, we'll give you more instructions about that, but we'll collect our pledge cards. We'll give those at the same time we do our tithes and offerings this morning. You'll also see uh, some of our youth uh, who'll be coming around, our children who have uh, stoles on this morning. Um, They've been a part of our Disciple Scouts each Sunday, and they've learned about the core values of Mount Sylvan, and one of our core values is generosity. So in keeping with that, they'll help in collecting our offerings and pledge cards later in the service. So we welcome them this morning. This afternoon at 5 o'clock, a couple of reminders. um, is our annual community Thanksgiving service. This year, Mount Sylvan is the host. So we'll have five congregations come together as we give our thanks and praise. There'll be a combined choir that will gather as well. So please come out at 5 if you can. Afterwards, we'll have a time of sharing food and fellowship in the fellowship hall. And then... On Sunday, December the 3rd, a reminder, a newcomer's information luncheon and fellowship hall. I think we've mailed about um, letters to about 16 people. And if you've been visiting with us for a while and you'd like more information about joining this wonderful congregation, plan to come out that day. It'll be right after worship on December the 3rd. We'll have a lunch together and answer any questions that you may have as we have a chance to get to know one another better. Let's begin today's service by joining together in the responsive call to worship, and I invite you, if able, to please stand. We gather this Sunday before Thanksgiving to honor our generous and life-giving God. We give thanks for God's infinite love, abundant grace, and bountiful provision. Especially today, we count the blessings of family, faith, friends, health, and home. We give thanks for our God who knows us by name, who hears our every prayer, who promises us everlasting life. Therefore, we will enter his gates with thanksgiving, for the Lord is good, his unfailing love continues forever, and his faithfulness continues to each generation. We rejoice in such steadfast love and for our salvation through Jesus Christ. Let us remember, give thanks, and sing praises to his holy name. Let us, amen, let us sing together, we gather together. Peace of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, be with you. 
let us welcome one another in his holy name. As you return to your seats, I want you to remain standing as we profess our faith. And we'll use the words of the statement of faith of the Korean Methodist Church this morning. We believe in one God, creator and sustainer of all things, father of all nations, the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, our teacher, example, and redeemer, the savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, and in grace equal to every need. We believe in the Word of God contained in the Old and New Testaments as the sufficient rule both of faith and of practice. We believe in the Church, those who are united in the living Lord for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God as the divine will realized in human society and in the family of God where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and in the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated and invite the children of, for children's time with Miss Heather. All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here today. I am so grateful for many things in my life, and this morning I am especially thankful for all of you. You are God's beloved children and I am God's beloved child and together we are all part of God's family. That brings me so much joy. You all may remember the story of the Good Samaritan, but this morning our gospel story is about the story of the grateful Samaritan. What does it mean to be grateful? Anybody know? What do you think, Leland? 
You're happy with what you have? Excellent. I love that answer. Braden. Grateful means you're happy. Yes. Charlie? You're not jealous of other people? Excellent answers, guys. Well, the story today is about 10 lepers. Now, remember, a leper is a person who has a disease called leprosy. This disease causes sores all over your body. Leprosy was very common in Jesus' day. And people who had this disease were thought to be dirty and unclean. They were requ required to stay away from other people because of the fear that they might infect them with their disease. One day, Jesus was walking through a small village when he saw a group of 10 lepers. They stood far away from Jesus and called to him, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Obviously, they knew who Jesus was and that he had the power to heal them. When Jesus heard them, he called back to the lepers and said, Go, show yourself to the priest. As the lepers went on their way to see the priest, they looked at their skin and the sores were gone. Jesus had healed their disease. They were so happy that they ran up and down the street singing and dancing. Suddenly, one of them stopped and went back. Praising God with a loud voice, he threw himself at Jesus' feet and said, Thank you. Jesus said to him, Weren't there ten who were healed? Where are the other nine? Only one out of ten remembered to say thank you. Do we ever forget sometimes to say thank you? Yeah, sometimes we do forget. We, children and adults, have a lot of blessings to be thankful for. Can you mention something that you're thankful for? What is something, Brayden? What are you thankful for? Your dogs, yes. What are you thankful for? Your family? Your mom, excellent. What about my you? Life. Your life. Oh my goodness, Grayson, that's a great answer. Eleanor. Everything. Everything. Oh yes, we have so much to be thankful for. Shelby, what did you have back there? Your home. Yes, excellent. Well, let's spend time right now thanking and asking God to help us to remember to thank Him every day. Will you pray with me? Yeah. Okay. Show me those prayer hands. Dear Lord, we give, you give us everything we need, but we often forget to say thank you. We thank you now and ask you to help us to remember to give thanks every day for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So how about this, guys? Let's make today gratitude day. I want you to tell three people today something that you are grateful for that they have provided to you. To give you a gratitude example, I might think, um, let's see, I may think somebody here at church who helped me do something nice and important today. I may think um, somebody, a friend, who makes me feel good, right? They do things to help me, right? That might be a good person to call and say thank you. So to get you started, I have a thank you card that I'm going to give to you guys. You can just pick one, and maybe you can write a special note in there to somebody and give it to them today, okay? Excellent. Here you go. Alexi, this is a card for you, okay? You're welcome. As we begin our time of prayer, let's sing together. Come, ye thankful people, come.
join me in the responsive prayer of confession. Gracious God, we confess our ingratitude for all the ways you have blessed us. We confess our impatience when prayers seem to go unanswered. We confess our selfishness instead of our willingness to give or share. We confess our unfaithfulness when wandering from your way. Forgive us, O oh God. Give us faith to see you in everything and everyone around us so that we may be truly grateful. I invite you to a time of silent confession. God is full of grace and love and offers forgiveness for our sins. Accept God's gift of grace and give thanks. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to pray for those that are on our prayer list. Um, let's remember in our prayers, Dawn of Hours, we had the um, service of celebration of the life for John yesterday, and we continue to pray for her and for her children, Jennifer and Mark, and their grandchildren, and all who grieve for the, the great life that um, John has lived among us. Uh, Rowena Piper also passed away um, this week on Tuesday, and her memorial service will be held here next Saturday. We'll be sending out the information about that, and it'll be held here in the sanctuary. Let's remember her children and grandchildren in prayers. Tomorrow, Kate Tilly will have an eye procedure. Um, Colleen Poor was hospitalized earlier in the week, but she's back now at Eno Point. Um, Jim Davidson will have cataract surgery this week. Tommy Wade's recovering from some eye and skin procedures. We're glad to see Tommy here this week. And during this past month, several of our congregation, um, including our family, have lost beloved pets. So uh, for those of you that are animal lovers, you know the grief that people suffer at the loss of our non-human children, as my granddaughter named them. Uh, there are others that are uh, on your hearts and in your minds, and I'll invite you to name them as we pray together. Let us pray. Great healer, redeemer, and sustainer, we lift up these names and concerns to you today. Knowing your strength and your love are both greater than our own. May your holy light shine down on each one, piercing darkness and hurt, emptiness and pain. We have named some before you, O God, and now we name before you others on our hearts. Fill these for whom we pray with renewed hope and blessed assurance, and wherever possible, empower us to help change these situations. Use us, let your light shine through us. God, for all the situations in our lives, for those that we intercede in prayer for, and Oh God, for the many blessings that you give us, that we give thanks for. We pray now, all oh, in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Before we ask the ushers to come forward, I just want to share um, an invitation for us to respond with our gifts on this special Sunday. Why do we pledge to our church each year? Why do we give back at least 10% of what God has graciously given to us? And back in the mid-1900s, there was a minister by the name of James Boyce who responded to those questions for his church, reminding his local church in Pennsylvania about the reason why the congregation was so important to his community. And so on this con consecration Sunday, I want to share his words because I think they fit well with what Mount Sylvan has done and continues to do here in this community, in our local schools, with our preschool, in this congregation, uh, for those who are most in need around us and around the world, the impact that you're making. So Reverend Boyce wrote this to his congregation. He said, we give as a church of our time and talents and treasures because our church exists for all who are spiritually weary, who seek rest, for all who mourn and long for comfort, for all who struggle and desire victory, for all who sin and need a savior, for all who are strangers and want a friend, for all who hunger and thirst after righteousness, and for whoever will come seeking help and hope, purpose and salvation, this church will continue to exist and thrive to fulfill God's call upon our lives. To whoever will come, we will open wide our doors, give our best, offer our welcome in the name of our loving Savior, Jesus Christ. For almost 140 years, Mount Sylvan has done just that, generation after generation of faithful men and women and children in this community. And now's our time to continue to pass that forward. We give God the thanks and the glory that we have something to share and to give back because of his bounty to us. At this time, we invite our ushers to please come forward.
table. Let us pray. Ever faithful provider and gracious God, help us every day to share our gifts with a generous heart and a loving spirit. We thank you for the wonderful children who've helped in the service this morning. And we thank you for every blessing big and small that you have already sent our way, for every blessing that you will send for our future. On this Sunday before Thanksgiving, we consecrate today's offerings along with our commitment cards for a new year of ministry together. May our tithes and our pledges reflect our whole trust in your grace, our deep thanks for all our blessings, our ongoing commitment to your church, and our renewed promise to love and serve you moment by moment with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. In Jesus' Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Today is from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 7 through 18. Moses declared to the Israelites, The Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters, welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Moses continued, Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments his ordinances and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness of an, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. It was the Lord who made water flow for you from Flint Rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know to humble you and to test you and in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm this covenant that he swore to your ancestors, as he is doing today. This ends the Old Testament reading.
you, Lori and Bill, and thank you to our bell choir this morning. What beautiful music you have shared for the Lord today. Thank you. We'll continue our reading of scripture as we turn to the gospel lesson. It's from Luke 17, verses 11 to 19. And I invite you, if able, to please stand for the reading of the gospel. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When Jesus saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then Jesus said to the healed leper, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Once again, let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you and praise you. We have felt your spirit among us this morning. We thank you for your comforting presence, for your reassuring presence with us, reminding us of all the blessings that we've been given and that you will be with us in and through all things. Lord, as your word is shared this morning, may the words of my mouth and may the thoughts and the meditations of all our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight. We do pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our Rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. Since it is the Sunday before Thanksgiving and our theme has been gratitude all morning, I want to begin with a, a humorous story that will help us think a bit more about that. It was, it's about two men. They were walking through a field. They were surveying it to see if it might be a, a plot of land that they might want to buy. And as they were doing so, they spotted this frightening, angry bull coming straight at them. And instantly they began to run to the nearest fence trying to escape. However, the raging bull followed in hot pursuit. It was soon apparent they would not make it over the fence in time. Terrified, one man shouted to the other. He said, Jim, you're a member of the church. Please pray for us, old friend. We've never needed prayer more than right now. And Jim answered in desperation, I I can't, he said. To be honest, I've never said a public prayer my whole life. But you must, begged his friend. The bull is catching up to us. He's nearly on my heels. All right, screamed Jim. But the only prayer I know is the one my father said every Thanksgiving when blessing our table food. Jim prayed, O Lord, for what we are about to receive, let us be truly grateful. (laughs) Now, that is genuine thankfulness, right? As you've discovered already from the scriptures that we have shared today, both Bible passages are about being thankful, gratitude, and being aware of the loving God who provides for all of our needs. I want to begin first by spending a few minutes in that Old Testament lesson from Deuteronomy chapter 8, the one that Ann shared for us a little earlier, where Moses speaks words of great wisdom to the Israelites. They're preparing now to enter the promised land. And Moses says, remember, remember, remember where you have come from. The cruelty of slavery, the harshness of the desert wilderness, and the fact that nature alone could not provide for you there, nor could you provide food and water for yourselves. And Moses continues, remember, remember where you have come from. Remember what you have survived. Remember whose hand provided all that strength and all those blessings. And then he concludes, do not say to yourself that your own power or the might of your own hands has gotten you here. But remember the Lord your God, 
Remember the Lord your God has graciously given it to you. Moses may have very well been preaching a sermon in 2023, right? Because the problem, I think, sometimes in America today is the same problem that the Israelites struggled with. Like those Israelites of old, too often we forget, don't we? We forget how much God has already provided for us. We've forgotten the source of all our blessings. We've forgotten at times that this land was founded upon Christian principles. Men and women, our ancestors, their desire to worship God freely. To use phrases specifically from Deuteronomy, we've forgotten that the wheat and the barley, the vineyards and the fig trees, the milk and the honey, the stone and the iron, the silver and the gold, all these provisions are from God's hands. And so I encourage you this week especially, on Thursday or whatever day that you gather with family and friends, look around your Thanksgiving table. Take time to give thanks for all that you already have, for every, every person in every chair, for every dessert pie waiting by the coffee pot, for every dish that's passed from the hands of one loved one to another. All these were provided by our Creator who chose to love us that much. Moses preaches in verses 11 to 16 this morning, don't forget, remember, he says again and again, remember it is the Lord himself who has fed you and sustained you and provided for you. Now, if you're like many Christian families on Thanksgiving, you go around the table and, and one by one, you share something that you're most thankful for this year. If it's like our table, oftentimes the answers are pretty brief. <laughs> Because after all, the best meal of the whole year is spread across the, the table in front of everyone and, and nobody wants to suffer the wrath of, of grandmother's gravy getting cold. And so we kind of move quickly one person to the next and we share our one thing for which we are thankful, sort of what the kids did in the children's time this morning. But I've learned over the years that most, the most common response, and I think it was among the children today, it's not a thing, is it? It's a person or a whole family or thanks to God who has, has gotten one or two of us through another health scare or thanks to God for the promise of eternal life and the life that we have here and now. That promise of eternal life is especially moving on Thanksgiving because there's often an empty seat where someone that we've loved so dearly used to sit and especially on Thanksgiving we remember. We remember how that life has touched ours beyond measure and we look ahead to that great banquet day, that great reunion someday in heaven. Those few minutes of praying aloud before the turkeys carved and the platters of mashed potatoes travel from person to person, those moments, I think they become some of the holiest moments of the whole year. We confess that every blessing has a source. Every blessing has a source. And that source, that great provider, is the Lord who loves us and died for us and on the third day arose from the very dead for us. The one who showers his bountiful blessings upon us again and again. I want to go back to the scriptures just once more this morning. And in keeping with Moses' sermon to the Israelites, our gospel lesson from Luke is also about remembering remembering to give thanks. In fact, this particular story, it's found only in Luke. It comes after Jesus' disciples have begged him earlier in chapter 17, verse 5, to increase their faith. And so that's the context here this morning. And it's very important to remember that part, that the disciples have just begged Jesus, increase our faith, help us to have a stronger faith. And then Jesus uses this encounter with the 10 lepers to, to teach them. How do you have strong faith? How do you increase your faith? And so our Lord's message to them and to us is quite simple. Our faith increases in proportion to our degree of gratitude. Our faith increases in proportion to our degree of gratitude, our degree of thankfulness 
In other words, the more thankful we become, the closer we grow to God, the more we learn to trust God in and through all things to provide. Now, the story of 10 lepers, it's a fascinating one. I know we read it almost every year around Thanksgiving. But as we dig into it a bit more, we're reminded that Jesus is on a road trip here. He's moving from Samaria, uh, between Samaria and Galilee here. He's on his way to Jerusalem. And as he enters the village, these 10 lepers approach him, but they approach him from a distance. And they call out from quite a ways away, raising their voices in unison. Jesus, master, have mercy on us, they say in verse 13. They're desperate for healing, but as a shunned people considered unclean, untouchable, they, they dare not rush up too close to Jesus. They know they're supposed to keep their distance. They live as outsiders way out on the edge of town. But Jesus sees them and he responds just as he sees and responds to broken people throughout the gospel and to all of us this morning. Again and again, Jesus has mercy. He has mercy on them and on us. And this time he gives the people in need what we might consider in 2023 a very unusual command. He says to them, go show yourselves to the priest. That's verse 14. Today, those words are odd, but in the time of Jesus, a leper who was fortunate enough to be healed had to show himself to the priest. It was based on the Old Testament laws from Leviticus. Only a priest could certify that a person was truly clean again, acceptable, able to return to the community. And so when we read those gospel verses today, I hope you sensed that something tremendously holy was happening. Something filled with miraculous healing power was going on in this exchange between Jesus and these 10 lepers. Because when these 10 broken human beings could not get close to Jesus, the Bible tells us that Jesus, Jesus chose to get close to them. Isn't that something? I don't want you to miss that part of the story. What the Levitical Old Testament law declared as out of bounds, Jesus Christ declared within bounds. And as the lepers made their way forward, um, coming, uh, going to the priest as Jesus had directed them, they were already miraculously healed by Jesus. All ten of them as they went, the Bible says. Now the clincher to the whole story. Is that one of them, of course, leper number 10, we're going to call him today. Leper number 10, he turns on his heels, he races back to Jesus, praising God with a loud voice. The praise, screaming, healed leper then falls down and he stretches out on the ground in front of Jesus and he thanks him profusely for what he has done. But only one turns back to give thanks. Were not ten made clean, Jesus asked. And surely he must have had disappointment in his voice when he said that. How about those other nine? Where are the, they, he asked in, in verse 17. How could they not turn back and thank the provider of their healing and the source of their blessing? How could we not turn back? How could we not turn back and thank the provider of our healing and the source of our blessings? Now, before we're too hard on those other nine lepers, I want to share with you the latest statistics on prayer and giving thanks to God in America. Researchers state that only about 54% of mainline Christians pray and thank God each day. 54%. So that means nearly half of the Christians in America, they go through a whole day without ever praying to God or thanking God for anything. Have we become like those other nine lepers? And how can we confess that God is the source of all that is good in our lives and then let a day pass or even a waking hour pass without thanking him for our blessings, for a gift of life itself that we've been given? 
You know, it's like the story of, of the hungry little boy who was given a free orange by the man working in the produce section at the grocery store. His mother wanted the little boy after receiving the orange to say thank you, so she asked him, now son, what do you say to that nice man? And the little boy thought about it for a moment and then he handed the orange back to the man and he said, sir, peel it for me. <laughs> you know, sometimes we're a lot like that little boy, aren't we? We treat God that way. The undeserved blessings, they overflow day after day but we're so busy wanting more, aren't we? We don't even realize how much we already have. Before we get caught up again in all the colorful lights and the tiny shining tinsel and the overspending that begins on Black Friday, actually now it's begun even before that, even before Thanksgiving in many stores and in our emails and online before we get caught up in all that, I pray that we'll give thanks this week for the little things, the gifts we already have, the beauty of this fall season, if you just noticed as you came in this morning, more than enough food to share. Some of you have been so gracious in sharing for families that will eat Thanksgiving next week because of the food that you brought. The people that are gathered around our tables, trusted friends, unexpected kindnesses, work to do and strength to do it. A wonderful, caring, loving church family, and we're so blessed to have that here. Ones that walk with us, help us weather the storm. And just for the gift of waking up this morning. My friends, may this be the Thanksgiving when we promise God and we'll promise ourselves that we will always, always turn back and give thanks. That we will never forget which, which of those ten healed lepers we are. Would you pray with me? O oh, gracious and loving God, source of bountiful blessings, healer of our bodies, healer of our souls. Among all the prayers we pray and all the requests that we make, may we always remember the simple prayer of the 10th leper. Lord, have mercy. Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is for the beauty of the earth. Such beautiful verses as we sing this together. Think about those verses, verses and continue to give thanks and praise. If you're able, please stand as we sing.
as you go, remember that God is the source. It is not we who provide for ourselves, but God who provides for us. Go, and in this week of Thanksgiving, remember each day to give thanks. Practice gratitude. And may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and the coming week. Go in peace. Thank you.